Good morning. Welcome to my video about how to keep yourself doing well emotionally during social isolation. This is a particularly important issue because I spend a lot of my career talking people who are socially isolated out of being socially isolated so that they can enjoy all the benefits of meeting with people. When you meet with somebody, they might say, hey, good to see you, which goes into your brain as seeing me is a good thing for people. It's a positive self-esteem thing. So if you're socially isolated, as we have to be to a certain extent under the, uh, the current health crisis, this is going to cause significant emotional problems for people. I was listening to the radio on ABC this morning, that's the Australian Broadcasting Corporation for anybody overseas, and Emma Alberici was into, uh, interviewing Lord King, who was the head of the, uh, the Reserve Bank of the UK during the global financial crisis. And he was saying that all of this social isolation and social distancing and all this restriction the government is asking us to engage in, there's no clear exit strategy for it. And that's going to give people a sense of this is never ending. And, and that's, that's really not good. And so he was talking about the emotional impact being bigger than the financial impact. And for an ex-banker, that's quite an admission. Um, now, Dr. Joseph Fleming, who works with us here at Warwick Psychological Services, sent me um, a link this morning to a Sydney Morning Herald article. And I'll just scroll down on my computer. Um, it's by Dr. Zach Seidler. Um, and it's called Men Don't Go It Alone, Pick Up the Phone, right? And it has a sobering paragraph in it where it says, suicide in men is uniquely predicted by risk factors such as unemployment, and we've seen all over the world that unemployment is becoming a massive issue, um, social isolation, yep, financial distress, yep, for a lot of people, and relationship breakdown. Well, you know, a lot of relationships are going to come under strain because of COVID-19 and all the impact that it has across our lives. So there's some very, very serious emotional issues here that people are going to face. And so I just wanted to talk today about some things that you can do which might help. Now, we're only in about week two, week three, week four in Australia with the social restrictions. And I think what people are doing at the moment is they're simply expanding out their regular coping strategies. So if they used to listen to music, they're listening to more music. If they used to play Call of Duty, they're playing more Call of Duty. If they used to be on Facebook, they're on Facebook more. That's okay for two or three or four weeks, but we might be talking about a, you know, a number of months. And so we've really got to put some strategies together for everybody, which are, oh, sorry, I've got the hiccups. Sarah made this amazing chocolate wheat big slice this morning, and she made me eat a piece. Now it's, yeah, giving me the hiccups, so sorry if I hiccup as I'm talking. Um, yeah, we, we, we've got to put in strategies that are going to last people months and give them the feeling that they're still moving forward in their lives in some way. So I've got a few ideas, and I've got them on a list in front of me because my memory's not as good as it used to be. So the first one is to learn some technology. Now, you're probably already doing this because... People are using Skype and WhatsApp, which is also good for video calling and is also free. Uh, they're using technologies such as that more than they ever have. Um, and I believe that um, House Party, which is another really important uh, app that people are getting into a lot, use of WhatsApp and House Party is up 100%. Use of Zoom is up 1,000% already because of social isolation. So I'd recommend that you get a copy of each of these apps and experiment with them. Try them all out. Even by trying them out, you'll be learning a bit more tech and, and then you'll be able to see which app suits you best for keeping in touch with people while you're not allowed to pop around the house or meet them down the coffee shop. Yep, so learn something, learn something techy. And if you want to get into it a bit more, um, there's a programming language called Scratch, which is very, very user-friendly. So if you're computer literate, then that's something you might want to look at, giving yourself a, um, a, a marketable skill that you will exit this process from. Um, secondly, 
this is one I came up with myself while I was talking to a client by Skype yesterday who's in the UK. I feel a bit sorry for the guy. He's in the UK. He's only been there six weeks. He's gone over there and all of a sudden they've said, um, yes, we knew you came over to the UK because there's a great pub scene and you can meet all your friends again who you've made in the UK. No, 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 you still have to stay at home. And he was there shivering. It was like five o'clock in the morning because it was 12 o'clock our time. And we came up with this idea together about reading a book. Except rather than you just sit and read a book yourself, read a book with somebody else by Skype or Zoom or whatever. Okay, so you might get the book and you might say you're going to read it with one other person. I'm sorry, this is a bit doggy at this one. I've read it a few times. Um, and it might be that you read page one and then the other person reads page two. So you read the left hand pages or right hand pages and they read the opposite page. So you take turns reading pages. And then, of course, as you're going through it, you can discuss um, what you think about what just happened or whatever. And it's sort of a, it's an activity where the two of you can share an experience. And we talked about this in the context of dating, because a lot of people would have just started a relationship before social distancing came in. And now they can't go to the movies, they can't... Um, they can't uh, go to a coffee shop or out for dinner. So, and, and you know, one of them may have an elderly relative, so they just don't feel they can actually physically be in the presence of the other person. And if you're Skyping them all the time and you're talking to these people all the time, eventually you kind of run out of stuff to talk about. So, um, yeah, the guy I was talking to from the UK and I came up with this idea of reading a book because then you are talking and you are in each other's presence for hours and hours. Uh, potentially, and um, yeah, really nice way to pass the time together. If you're after ideas of what to read, if you haven't read the Harry Potter series, I don't care how old you are, read the Harry Potter series. It's bloody amazing, and it's thousands of pages. It'll keep you busy for a while. Um, if you're a bit younger, <clears throat> one of the things you can look at is books similar to these. These are based on the Star Wars movies, um, so, you know, if you're up to about the age of, I don't know, 82, everybody's interested in Star Wars, and now the books won't come out of the box, these are Choose Your Own Adventure books. Do you remember those? Yeah? That was before we had computer games. All you had was Choose Your Own Adventure books. Um, and where's an example? Um, this is a little bit linear, this one. Here we go. So, you read the page, and then you get to the bottom of the page, and it says, if you choose to do this... Turn to page 130. If you choose to follow Dr. Paneth to the laboratory, turn to page 54. So you choose the way that the story goes. And that's something, again, that you could do with somebody else because you could take turns. Um, take turns making decisions. And then, and then if it goes badly, you can wind the other person up and say, I told you we shouldn't have done that. We should have done the other option. Yeah, yeah anyway. As for where you get these books, virtually all libraries now make books available electronically for free. So if you're not a member of the local library, you can join up online and you can download ebooks. So if two of you download the same ebook, you can both read it together. If you want to make a little book club with half a dozen of you, you can read a third of a page and then the next person reads a third. So you're reading a third of a page every couple of pages. So yeah, and then you can all discuss the book together. So books is one quite good way of getting through things. All right, the next one is computer-based. So here we go. <clears throat> now, for this, I'm going to turn the iPad that I'm recording on this around, and you're going to look at my computer screen. So here we go. All right. Aha! Now, if any of you haven't played Minecraft before, it is amazing. Um, it is not just a game for children at all, and I'm going to show you how I play because it's really relaxing and low stress. So when you open up Minecraft, uh, which costs a little bit of money as computer games do, but I think it's well and truly worth it. Uh, one way to play it, the simplest way to play it is go single player, and then you can create your new world, and you can call it whatever you want to. And then click on game mode survival, which means you have to earn stuff. If you go to creative you get everything for free but that's too easy 
um, and hardcore is just too stressful. So go survival, more world options, uh, if you want to create structures, then it creates villages for you to discover and magical palaces and all that sort of stuff. Um, you want to allow cheats because that makes it more interesting and you want a bonus chest to start with. And then create new world. Right. And then what it'll do is it'll create a world for you to explore. And at the moment, we all are missing out on exploring our own world, aren't we? So, yeah, this is a way. Oh, sorry, I just got an email. This is a way of uh, creating a world for you to explore. Here we go, we're almost there. I just want to show you what it looks like and show you how to make it stress-free. So just bear with me for a sec. Here we go, almost there. It's creating a whole world. So that's why it takes a few seconds. Here we go, joining the world. All right, so this is the world it's just created. And as you move the mouse, you go from left to right and you can have a look around and you can see there's lots of trees where we are. And somewhere, very close, there should be a bonus chest. Oh, there's some water, see? And it's all blocks. It's, it's based on blocks, so it's not graphically beautiful. Oh, here's the bonus chest. Okay, so let's go over to the bonus chest. And as you can see, there's some torches. If you left click on stuff, you break it and then you can pick it up. See, it's jumped into slot one on my inventory there. And if I right click on the chest, you can see all that good stuff that's in there. So we've got some raw salmon and we've got some apples and we've got a pickaxe and some logs and sticks and an axe and stuff. All right. Now, what you do is you explore the world and as you do, you find fun stuff. And I won't do too much exploring. I just want to get to somewhere. Oh, see, there's a mountain over there. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. If I've fallen down there, that would have been bad. So that's a mine. So you can go down there and there's coal and iron and gold and diamonds and stuff. Um, and I'd also like to find another animal. Oh, see, there's some coal. See the black stuff there? That's coal. And there's a big mountain. And yeah, so, so you can explore the world. You can find villages and stuff. If you hit escape, it brings up options. And then if you go difficulty, peaceful, that means there's no bad guys, right? So you can explore the world in total peace and harmony. You're never going to die unless you run off a cliff or fall into lava or something. Um, yeah, and you can just explore your world and have fun doing it. Let's make a little staircase so I can climb this tree. Here we go. Oh, I just want to climb the tree. I just want to climb the tree. Here we go. Right, so, oh, 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 no, too far. So, oh, look, there's an interesting rock formation over there. There's a big mountain you can climb and see there's snow on top of them. Yeah, it's usually a bit better when it's nice and open and you can see for a long way. But, um, yeah, there's woodland, there's desert, there's all sorts of stuff. And I haven't seen any animals either, but there's lots of animals in the game you can interact with. So it's really, really fun. And one of the other good things about Minecraft is that you can invite other people in. You can open up your world um, and other people can join you. So you can have other people um, help you build houses or palaces or mine or whatever. So it's a good way of interacting with people. And if you, you know, if you turn on, uh, you know, stick a headset on, you can talk to the people while you play. So it's a really nice way of interacting with people. It's sort of a very, very simplistic, on the surface of it, computer game, if you haven't played many computer games, and you don't need fast reactions, because I could just sit here, as I am now, and not play the game, and nothing happens. A, a pig might wander up to you or something, but nothing bad's gonna happen. So I, I find it quite relaxing playing and peaceful in that way. If you turn it up to uh, normal mode or hard mode, when it gets to night, you get bad guys coming in, um, you know, like spiders and stuff. So, yeah, you don't want to be bothered with that. Anyway, so Minecraft's good fun. All right, next thing. Um, <clears throat> you're going to have some spare time. You're not going to have as much time going out doing stuff that you were before. So I would recommend taking on a project. This is probably going to go on for a while. My daughter has just started relearning the guitar, and so I hear some quite nice sounds coming out of her bedroom from time to time, so that's nice. So guitar is one thing you can learn. Um, you can learn a language if you've ever wanted to learn Spanish. There are so many YouTube tutorials out there and it's a really great way to learn, so you can learn Spanish. Um, or you could even take on a renovation project. We're doing a bit of painting at home. Well, actually my wife's doing a bit of painting at home. Um, but last time I had spare time was about four years ago. I had a block of spare time. 
and I changed all the toilets in our house because we have 30 year old toilets. So I changed them all for new ones. And I did all that through YouTube. When it comes to handyman stuff, I'm useless. But with the help of YouTube, I changed all the toilets in our house and it wasn't even that expensive. And because I was basically chewing up spare time, it meant that it didn't matter that it took me a while. So yeah, you can, you can do some sort of renovation project like that. And another thing you can possibly do around the house would be to grow a herb garden. Again, there's lots of YouTube tutorials on how to do this. It can be fairly simple and inexpensive. And when you're growing things, you get this sense of time is passing because now I've got some oregano. So yeah, that can be a nice way to, to show you that even though it feels like the world's getting smaller and everything kind of sucks, um, there's something positive coming out of this. You've got some nice herbs to cook with. And that means you also don't need to go to the supermarket and queue for herbs. All right, two other things I've got for you. Exercise, exercise is tricky. On my COVID-19, what to do with kids and how to get them out and get them exercising, I talked about things like Pokemon Go, geocaching, that sort of stuff. You can look up geocaching if you want to. It's a good way of getting out and about and in the neighborhood. But if you are absolutely confined to home, there's still ways of going about getting exercise. Now, a lot of them are, um, you know, do a yoga class with such and such person where it's on, you know, on YouTube or whatever. If you've got a bit of money to spare, there's some amazing kit out there, though. For example, there's a company called Peloton who make the most incredible exercise bikes and treadmills. They run to thousands of dollars, but they are absolutely amazing. Um, and Fight Camp, if you Google Fight Camp, they have punching bags and boxing gloves which have sensors in them so they can tell you how hard you've hit and how many times and all that sort of thing. So again, it's, it's over a thousand dollars, but if you're talking about entertainment for the next six months, if you do have a bit of money spare, it's something you'll use now and then that may become a habit when we're all back on the streets again. So yeah, there's some interesting stuff out there as far as exercise is concerned. Now, I've saved the best for last. The best thing I can talk to you about doing over the next month or so, or even in the next couple of weeks, is to make a plan. Now, I'm, I've never really been one for five-year plans. I think so much changes in your life in five years, it's pretty much pointless. But, well, I don't know, it could be aspirational rather than pointless, I suppose. But I would recommend that over the next month, you make plans for what you're going to do after COVID-19. An example of this is that at Easter every year, I go camping with my family. And the campsite contacted us and said, well, due to all the health restrictions, we're, uh, we're not going to be open. But what we'd like you to do is, rather than just cancel the booking, roll it forward to next year. And that's good, because now I have that to look forward to. Yes, it's 12 months away, but I have that to look forward to. Now is actually an excellent time to plan you know, if you, if you were going to do an overseas trip at some stage in the future, plan it for December, plan it for March, start the planning, start reading about where you're going to go. Start planning what you are going to do when this is all over. Give yourself something to look forward to, because then you're looking beyond the end of all the hassle we're going through at the moment, rather than watching it on TV all the time, thinking about it, talking about it all the time. Start talking about what you're going to do when this is over, what you're looking forward to getting into that you've never done before or whatever. Yeah, Make a plan for travel, make a plan to study, whatever it is that's going to make you look forward to 2021 or even late 2020, hopefully. Have a plan. Look beyond the end of this crisis. I'm recommending to people that they limit their TV viewing about COVID-19, their conversations about COVID-19, their reading about COVID-19 on the internet. Limit it to half an hour a day. There's nothing you need to know that you don't already know that's absolutely vital. And if it is, that information will find you in that half hour a day. But limit yourself to half an hour a day. Otherwise, all you're going to be doing is you're going to be rolling around in stress. Yeah? So change the subject in your brain. Try and take on some of these things that I've talked about today. Take on some projects, get into some activities, start using 
the freedom that you have because you don't have to drive to work, you don't have to drive home from work. Um, yeah, start using the time that you have in a way that makes you feel like you really are achieving stuff in your life again. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll be putting out some more videos over the next few weeks about what's going on to try to reach a few people who are socially isolated at the moment. Don't let yourself get socially, socially isolated. Pick up some of these ideas and run with them. All right, so my name's Paul. I work at Warwick Psychological Services in Perth, Western Australia. My email is paul at ward.org. Nice and simple. Um, or you can hop on our website, uh, which is wps.support, and you can see what we do here. Otherwise, stay safe and um, enjoy your lives.